Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Ms. Skoken, back with another AP Statistics lesson. This time we're in Chapter 3, which is all about describing relationships between bivariate data, so an X and a Y. Section 3.1 is all about scatter plots and correlations, so let's go ahead and get started. Our learning objectives for this section are, first of all, be able to figure out which variable is explanatory and which variable is response in different situations. Typically, the explanatory variable is the one that influences or changes or uh, seems to explain the changes in the other variable, in the response variable. Sometimes, however, we're going to choose explanatory and response based on what we're trying to predict. And if we're trying to predict a particular variable, that is going to end up being our response variable. We want to be able to draw scatter plots both by hand and using the graphing calculator to display the relationship between our two quantitative or numerical variables. We want to be able to describe the relationship that we see when we have a scatter plot. We're always going to describe using three items direction, form, and strength. We want to be able to interpret the correlation coefficient, which is going to be denoted by the variable r. We want to be able to understand the basic properties of correlation, including what happens to our value of r or our correlation when we see outliers in the pattern between x and y. We want to be able to use our graphing calculators to calculate the value of r, the correlation coefficient, and we want to have a very clear and strong understanding of why association or a relationship between an explanatory and a response variable does not imply that the change in one causes the change in the other. Now, we have looked at in chapter 1 and chapter 2 univariate data, which means one va variable, either a categorical variable or a numerical variable. In this chapter, we're going to be looking at two uh, numerical variables and how they relate to each other. So the response variable is going to be the outcome of a study or whatever we're measuring at the end of an experiment, if you want to think of it that way. The explanatory variable is the one that helps explain what changes we see in the response variable. And it could be that our explanatory variable is actually causing the change in the response variable, but it could be that something else altogether that is not even part of our study is causing the change. Uh, some other variable such as time or population growth or something like that. So don't ever make that assumption. But we do want to look at the relationship. We want to describe it in a uh, kind of objective way. The first thing that we're always going to do to be able to describe the relationship is we're going to graph it. We're going to graph the scatter plot, and that is going to show the relationship. The horizontal axis is always going to have the explanatory variable. The response variable is going to be graphed on the vertical axis. So first things first, decide which one goes on which axis. Second thing, always, 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 you're going to label and scale your axes appropriately so we know what we're looking at. The reader can see what's going on. Remember, you always scale with nice round numbers. Then you're going to plot the individual x, y points on your scatter plot. When we look at a scatter plot, we want to be able to, to detect a pattern, and we also want to be able to detect points that are off of the pattern. So first things first, look at the pattern. What do you see? And you're going to frame that with direction, form, and strength. Then look for any departures from the pattern. Do you see any points that are overall, one way or the other, in the x direction or in the y direction, that they're off of our overall pattern. So one of the things that we said is direction, form, and strength, or um, form, direction, strength, whichever way you want to order it is not a problem. But when we talk about direction, we're specifically talking about what do we see as we read the graph from left to right. Do we see as the explanatory variable gets higher, the response variable gets higher? That is a positive association. When we see a negative association as we read from left to right, we're going to see it going downward from left to right. Or as the explanatory variable gets larger, we see a decrease uh, or a smaller value in the response variable. Okay, so take a look at this one as an example. You want to, again, 
form direction strength, the form that we see is kind of curved. It doesn't really look linear to me. We notice that the explanatory variable is what percent of students are taking the SAT and the response variable is the mean math score. One may or may not describe the other, but we're trying to predict what the mean math score is, so we're just doing it based on the number taking the SAT, or the percent of students in a state taking the SAT. So again, we see a curved relationship, not linear. As we read from left to right, the direction is negative because higher values of the explanatory variable are associated with lower values in the response variable. And it does appear to have a moderately strong pattern. So here again, moderately strong negative curve relationship between these two numerical variables. We also have the further uh, uh, observation that we seem to have a cluster on the left and a cluster on the right showing that we may have two different things that are graphed in here on the same on the same graph. Okay, so you always want to use very consistent language when you're describing. It's kind of the agreed upon language for all of us. Now this example, what we're seeing is a pattern of points per game to explain the number of wins. That kind of makes sense. So the more points per game a team scores, the greater number of games that it wins. That, that definitely is logical relationship. So it is positively related. The pattern looks fairly strong and it definitely appears to be a linear relationship here. So it makes sense that points per game is explanatory, explaining the number of wins that we see. It makes sense that it's positive and we do see a linear pattern. Okay, when we measure, uh, first thing we're going to do again is the scatter plot. When we look at the scatter plot, we want to have some way of measuring how strong the relationship is between changes in X and changes in Y. How well does the X explain the behavior in the Y. How well does the explanatory variable explain the behavior in the response variable? And we're going to use what we call the correlation coefficient, variable is going to be R, to explain the strength of the relationship between these two variables. Now, R is going to range between negative 1 and positive 1. Negative 1 being perfectly aligned going in a negative association direction positive one is going to be perfectly aligned in a positive association or positive direction and zero halfway between negative one and positive one is going to be a n very weak relationship. Okay so We have an understanding of what R is going to do by measuring the strength of the relationship, but it, remember, keep in mind, it does not tell us the entire story. And so we're always going to need to look at the scatter plot, no matter what, no matter what, no matter what, before we can determine if it's a strong relationship or not. Even if we see a high value of the absolute value of R, okay, so either very strong, but, uh, close to negative one or close to positive one. All right, so here we've got some examples, and we can see what a zero looks like, where it kind of just looks like a cloud of points. We can't really tell if it's going in the negative direction or the positive direction. They're kind of all over the place. We can see one with the negative 0.3. It does look negative, but the points are still kind of all over the place. We don't see a strong association. We could call it linear but it looks almost as much like a cloud as it does like a linear relationship. Once we get to about a 0.5, we can see it's a lot stronger. It's starting to take form. It does look linear, uh, overall linear, and it is positively sloped at the 0.5. When R is equal to negative 0.7, we see a negative relationship. Again, the points are a little bit more closely aligned, forming a little bit more strength. We might call that moderately strong. When we get to R being positive 0.9, we see those are very closely aligned. We definitely see a linear form. It happens to be in the positive direction this time. And our last example where we have a negative 0.99, we can see that those are almost perfectly aligned. Nothing is off the overall pattern and they are negatively sloped and it does form a linear pattern. All right.
what are we going to do with R? Now, first of all, the cal calculation for R, we're usually going to be doing inside our calculator, one of the functions of our calculator. So we're not going to be using this formula very frequently. However, we do want to be able to use this formula sometimes and feel comfortable with it because it will allow us to see how strongly any one of the XY pairs is influencing the value of the correlation coefficient. So let's just take a quick look at this formula. I want you to notice that this X minus X bar over the standard deviation is the Z score for an X value and we have the same thing in the Y so that's the Z score for a Y value. When we get each of those individual Z scores for one particular point we're going to multiply those together then we're going to add them all up to each other and last of all we're going to divide by n minus 1, n being the number of xy pairs that you have. That will allow us to see the contribution of each of the points and then the overall total for r. So it's not really a bad formula to expand and use, it's just going to be a little bit tedious if we have a lot of points. Now some important things that we need to know about r, the correlation coefficient. r doesn't know which is your explanatory and which is your response variable. So if you were to reverse them, you would get the exact same value for R. That would not be the case for the least squares regression line, but we'll talk about that in the next section. Now, when we change units, so for instance, if we're going from inches to centimeters with our variables, if we're converting them to a different unit, the value of R is not going to change. It's going to stay the same regardless what units we're in. Because again, looking back at that formula, you can see that if we have units in the numerator that are inches, the standard deviation is also going to be in inches, so the inches will cancel out and we end up having no units. So R does not have any units, nor does it change when we change the units of the X or the Y variable. What do we need to be careful of? Both variables must be numerical variables. Both the explanatory and the response variables must be numeric or quantitative. It does not tell us, no matter how strong the correlation coefficient is, what the shape of the relationship is between X and Y. So we need to see it on the scatter plot. The last, uh, another thing that we need to be very cautious of is if we have just a few points that are off of the pattern, it's going to strongly affect our R value and it's not a complete summary of our two variable data so we need to once again see the scatter plot. Taking a look at these we see some examples uh, the explanatory variable is boats registered in the state of Florida in thousands the response is manatees killed we see a strong positive linear association we do see four points that have a high number of boats registered but a lower than expected number of manatees killed. Taking a look at this example, it's a little bit weaker, maybe a point, point 0.5 or point 0.4. It is positively associated. The number of storms predicted is being used to predict the number of storms observed. And here we see a very loose pattern, maybe a point 0.3 or so, again in the positive direction. So there's a weak positive relationship between the healing rate of the first limb and the healing rate in the second limb. On this one, we definitely see a negative association. Again, points are all over the place. So we see a weak negative linear relationship between last year's percent return trying to predict this year's percent return. Those are the objectives. We covered all of our objectives. Uh, you can make notes as needed. Go back and take additional notes as needed. You know you have homework, independent practice to do, so I'll see you back for section 3.2.